What you have just seen is intertribal dancing. This is where Indian nations of the Northern Plains have gathered together as one to celebrate life. The song, accompanied by the drumbeat, which is the heartbeat of our nation, arouses the dancer and takes him on a journey to the past, to the land of his ancestors, who once roamed this great land. Some dance for the joy that it brings, while others dance to seek identity with the past. Some dance to receive recognition and to feel part of Indian society. Dancing begins in the early afternoon with the grand entry. This is a parade of all the dancers and the organizers of the powwow. This is a recent addition to many of the Saskatchewan celebrations. As the dancers enter the dancing area in single file, the various styles of outfits and steps become more visible. It is here you begin to see how colorful this event really is. Flag bearers head the procession carrying the Canadian and the United States flags and the traditional eagle feather staff. Following the flag bearers, we have the powwow committee. Elders and veterans are often asked to join in the grand entry. Immediately following them, we have the visiting princesses. Then the dancers follow, led by the men's traditional dancers. The men's traditional dance, as it is seen here today, was adopted by the Cree from various tribes who visited Cree country. The dancers are characterized by their ribboned outfits, long cloth leggings, and special style of bustle and headgear. The dancers wear a variety of headgear, such as war bonnets, porcupine roaches, and various animal skins. The dancers wear a black bustle made from quail or eagle feathers. Suspended from the bustle hangs a bustle trailer. These trailers, decorated with colorful ribbons, small mirrors or sequins, are often two or three feet long and hang to the ankle. Each dancer relates a story of a hunter stalking game to the beat of the drum. A good dancer gives a vivid picture of his search for game. Turning his head side to side, the dancer carefully places each step. Frequently, a dancer will stop, crouch down, and carefully inspect an area, then rise and continue to dance. Some traditional dancers move as many muscles as possible in time to the beat of the drum, mimicking the actions of a hunter. The powwow centers around the grass dance, a social dance brought to the Cree in the late 1800s. This dance originated with the Pawnee of Nebraska and was a later adopted by the Omaha as their victory dance. It was characterized by the bundles of braided grass symbolizing scalps, which were tied to the belts of dancers. The Sioux who later received the dance called it the Omaha dance, or the dance where the grass is tucked in the belt. It finally became known as the grass dance. In the late 1800s, the Dakota Sioux, who came to Canada after the Battle of the Little Bighorn, brought the dance to the Cree. In honor of their benefactors, the Cree called the dance Potsimuin, or the Dakota dance. The dance frequently served as a victory dance in which the dancers would imitate their actions in battle. The basic step was to lightly tap once on the ground before the full forward step was taken. From this step, the individual created his own style and step variation. In the past, as the bands would camp together, they would pick their best dancers to compete for trophies or other desired objects. During the grass dance, people would place their wagers on their favorite dancer. The dancer was expected to keep in perfect rhythm with the beat of the drum. This demanded good muscle control and was also viewed as a test of skill and endurance. The dancer who was able to outlast and outstep the others would add the trophy to his dance outfit. The brightly colored outfits of the dancers add to the excitement of the dance. Large bustles made from feathers and fluffs arranged in a circular form are an important part of the dancers' regalia. Bustles made from eagle feathers are greatly prized. Outfits vary in style and color among individuals. 
Porcupine roaches as headgear, bustles, fur leggings, and bells are standard. The dancers move to the beat of the drum, going around the perimeter of the arena in a clockwise manner. The beat is essential for timing their steps and body movements. Their steps vary, but the knees are brought up high with the body moving in time. Often during the grass dance, the older women would dance to the beat of the drum in one spot, usually on the edge of the dancing area. This stationary dance was practiced by the women of the Assiniboine tribe. Keeping in perfect rhythm, they moved their bodies up and down, bending slightly at the knee. Some women performed the dance standing beside the drum while joining in the singing with the men, complementing the songs with their high soprano voices. The women's traditional dancer is characterized by their full-length dress. Usually the dress is made from hide. The shoulders of the dress are covered with beadwork that is hand sewn. In each hand, the women carry a shawl and a fan made from eagle feathers. The ladies' fancy dance is performed by the younger women. The dancers wear either the traditional leather dress or in most cases, the cloth dress. Many prefer the lighter cotton dress for dancing. Matching leggings or moccasins known as high tops are worn by the dancers. To complete their outfits, they wear beaded hair pieces, jewelry, a shawl, and other accessories. Fringes usually trim the shawl and moccasins and greatly enhance the beauty of the outfit. The drumbeat used for the women's fancy dance is often slower than that used in the men's fancy dance. Only the skilled can keep in step. The steps are similar to those used by the men's fancy dancers, but are executed on a much smaller scale. Superb grace and body movement is displayed by the champion dancers. Their feet, especially, must move in light and perfect rhythm. And now in closing, we present our youth, who in their own way are following in the traditions of our forefathers, both in dancing style and in dress. <laughs>